Hi there, and we're live. Welcome to uh, this late, latest episode of Totally Unscripted. My name is Martin Hoxie, and uh, I'm joined, um, as usual, by Steve Webster, and also delighted um, to have Ben Collins here uh, joining us as well. Hi, Ben. Hi, Martin. So thanks very much for having me on the show. I've been a, um, a watcher for quite a while, so it's nice actually <laughs> to be here as a guest today. So thanks. So, Ben, you're... Uh, you, you've pr produced a ton of stuff um, around Google Apps Script and particularly around Google Sheets. Um, you, you know, your, your background for people that don't know is in, in terms of data analyst and uh, you're also a trainer as well. And um, it's rather fortuitous timing that um, this episode of Totally Unscripted, which is focusing on Data Studio, comes the day after Google announced that Data Studio is out of beta. So um, I think that's great. Um, the product has matured to the point where Google are happy to, to remove the beta sticker. And um, hopefully uh, this will mean that there'll be floods of people as well wanting to get their teeth into Data Studio. And what no be better way than um, a quick um, tour from you, Ben? Yeah, sure. So um, just to introduce myself a little bit as well, I, um, I came from a sort of finance and accounting background doing Excel and VBA. And that was sort of my route into data and technology and i really liked the coding and the data analysis side of things more than the accounting so kind of moved into that area um picked up g suite and app script and google sheets uh, it's about four or five years ago now and and gradually i've just sort of moved entirely into that area um freelancing now and and creating courses around that content um, and the blog and yeah like you said so data studio was launched about two years ago and um so it's been improved dramatically since then. So every time I load up Data Studio, it seems to change a little bit. But I think finally now they've got the the, the core product set. And it's great to see it out of beta now because um, there's a lot of momentum with the product. And I think it's going to go to um, sort of just have a lot of new users now and, and, and really grow in terms of the community as well as the, the um, people using it. So it's, it's great to see. And today we're going to talk about Data Studio connectors. And we'll get into what they are in a minute. Um, and they're all about bringing the data, uh, your data into Data Studio. So um, what I'll do is I'll jump across to some slides I've got, Martin, and, and sure. just yeah. talk through that. And um, we'll go from there. Um, so let me see. If... Screen share. So while Ben is setting that up, um, we've got the YouTube chat going. So if you've got any questions for Ben, uh, feel free to put those in there. Um, or you can just ping me on Twitter as well, M Hoxie, and um, we'll pick those up um, at the end. Okay, great. So can you see the, the screen now, yeah. Martin and Steve? Um, yeah. So we're going to talk about Data Studio um, Community Connectors. And um, so we'll just talk briefly about you know what they are just to set the scene. So for those who are not familiar, Data Studio is a dashboard reporting tool. And... Uh, on the left hand side here you can see a little screenshot of a just an example mailchimp dashboard and what it what um, data studio allows you to do is visualize uh, data from your web apis uh, and from your google services in this really slick easy to use dashboard with a really clean easy to use ux a bit like almost a little bit like a google sheets you know you've got the venues across the top and you create new files copy them all that sort of stuff and you just drag and drop charts in there uh, so you can make your dashboard reports really, really quickly, and they look really, uh, really professional, very easy sharing, very secure, all that good Google stuff. Uh, and then the connectors, which is what we're specifically going to talk about today, because that's all the app script stuff, are, is a standalone app script file, which stands in between your, your, it fits between your API and Data Studio, and it builds that pipeline between your web API, which you know, it's just used the Mailchimp example. So I use MailChimp to send emails out to um, to my list and to manage all the campaigns and things. And so I have a lot of data in MailChimp, but you don't get very sophisticated reporting through MailChimp. So um, what you can do is build this little app script file, this connector um, program, and then pipe your data through into um, Data Studio. And then you can totally build your own bespoke custom um, dashboards, which you can share with people and uh, and that good stuff. So in a nutshell, what happens is if I'm the user of the Data Studio dashboard, I will uh, say drag and drop a chart onto my um, into my dashboard. That sends a request 
to my um, connector file, which then processes that, calls the API, and gets the data back from the API. Then does some data wrangling to um, transform that data from the raw API JSON into the format that Data Studio needs, and then sends that back to Data Studio. And then lo and behold, your charts there showing with um, your data from, from your web API. So, uh, so as Martin said, it's come out of beta now. So, uh, and I think there's already 500 connections now to different web APIs. Um, but if you want to build, you know, a lot of them are paid and maybe don't quite do precisely what you want. So you can still totally valid to build your own. Or if you have a web service that doesn't have a connector built yet, you might want to go and build one. Um, some are open source as well. And um, yeah, and they're really actually, they're not too, um, they're not too difficult. It's a lot of framework so that they follow this sort of a set pattern for the for how the file's structured. Um, and obviously they can get more complex as the connectors get more complex, but in terms of the bare bones, the, the first demo I'll show you, it's actually, it's pretty, um, pretty straightforward. So, so in terms of the, the request, um, yep. you mentioned that when you drop a chart in, it will send a request and get data. Um, is, do you, is what, what kind of refresh does it do? Is it when the browser with the data studio dashboard refreshes, it will so uh, request if, new data yeah if if you um if you refresh your browser it will send it would send another request uh, there's a re there's a refresh button inside of data studio that you right. can refresh your data with and if you go and make any changes to the chart or drop a new chart in or or that kind of thing it will send a new one through um so yeah that's how it works at the moment um, and and so i really tried to strip it right back to what are the sort of building blocks in every connector. And it, it really, there's, there's four, I've got five things here, but really the numbers two and three are the same. Um, you have a configuration function, which is when the user first connects to Data Studio with this connector, whether there's any kind of setup they need to do. So maybe they need to enter their, um, you know, their username or their, or mm -hmm. um, some sort of uh, maybe an API key or a, a tag they want to search for for that specific to sort of narrow the data down to, to their use case. So that's the configuration. And I'll show you that in action later on. Sure. Then numbers two and three are all about setting up the schema, which is like the blueprint for your data that you're going to send to Data Studio. So Data Studio knows, OK, these are the fields that I'm getting back from, um, from this connector. And it's these are dimensions I have. These are the metrics I have. And this one is numeric. This one's a string. This one's a geographic field, that kind of stuff. So it knows when the data arrives. It knows how to pass it and how to show it. Um, so that's what the, the numbers two and three are all about, the, the schema. And then you have the, the get data function, which is really the heart of your Data Studio uh, connector file. And what that does is it, it gets the request from Data Studio, which says, hey, I want to draw a chart. Uh, you know, line chart which has a time along the x-axis and a mount up the y-axis, and I want those two fields, please. So that request comes in to get data, and get data says, okay, I'm going to go and grab the data from the API, and then um, send the just the data that you asked for back to Data Studio along with the schema, the two those two fields from my schema back to Data Studio. And so get data is typically um, the function where you do all, a lot of the coding that's specific to your connector. So the, the configuration of the schema, you kind of follow a framework. Um, you know, let, it's just about setting things up. And then the get data is where you say, okay, well, this is where I need to do all my data wrangling and call my API and do my error handling. And then finally, um, the fifth sort of mandatory function, if you like, is the get authentication type, this get auth type. And on this very simple one I'm going to show you, it's just um, non. So there's no authentication. So we just say non and just specify that. But you can do OAuth authentication. And what you would do is you'd specify OAuth in this get OAuth type. And then you have to add in a few extra functions uh, and that and the OAuth app script library as well to, to sort of hook that up. But it's just the same as you know any any OAuth authentication workflow in a in an add-on the way you know like Steve does and that kind of thing. So so that's the very basic um, things you need in your um, your code. GS file, and then the one other thing you need to deploy your connector is this thing, is your manifest file. And you need to just add in 
you'll see this little um, data studio object where you, it's basically just the metadata for your data studio connector so that when so that when um, you try and hook the thing up um, you know data studio knows that it's a data studio connector and this is the data about it and then can display that to the user when they first um, try and use your connector so that you know they know that okay this is the right connector I was looking for and this is what it does and this is if there's any um, you know sometimes you might there's a template you might put into this for example that loads up when it first loads up so so you have to set that manifest file up but again you can just do the, the very basics and then expand it as you need um, so yes yeah, so I thought um, what we do is just jump into an actual demo now rather than me talking away and try and actually build a little data studio sure. connector and see if we can get it to work um, because who doesn't love a live demo right <laughs> um, and so what I thought would be quite fun would be to try and connect to this one which is the it's called the open notify a, open notify api and it just returns you can see the bottom right down here this little packet of data which is the current position of the international space station the longitude and latitude and a timestamp and so it you know it's a really nice little connector to work with because it's fun topic and also it's it's pretty easy um, in terms of the code you need just to pass that when it comes back from the API. And then what we'll do is when we've set it up, hopefully we'll get to this data screen here when we connect to the connector where we see our, our different fields. So let's have a, we'll have a go. Um, so if you bear with me while I just try and get to the right page now. So um, so it's, it's a standalone app script file that we build for um, these connectors. So we'll just go into new um, and we'll just go and create an app script file and just clear out the my function one um i'm not going to try and code it all <laughs> mm, my life yeah. um, <laughs> because that would be a total disaster um so what what i'll do is i'll just i'll put in those five functions that i talked about um can you see those yeah martin yep okay good um so we have that configuration one um the, the two set up for the schema the get data and the authentication type so that's really all we need for this one it's really is that, that simple in this case um and what i'll do now is just drop in some a bit of code into each of these in turn to to just get things um to get things going so so that's configuration in this case we have we don't have any so we we actually just put this in but it's blank for now but mm -hmm. i'll show you an example the second demo where in this configuration params we might have things like an input box for the user to enter their username or or API key or something. So that's what the configuration is for. In this case, doesn't we don't actually have any configuration. Um, so let me just get this next one. Um, so the fixed schema is, like I said, it's the blueprint for our data, and so it's an array of it's an array of these um, little objects here with just saying hey i'm going to send you through a timestamp field this first one for example i'm looking at can i make that should i make that bigger martin or is it okay um maybe bit, make it a bit bigger yep yep there we go perfect okay great um so the first so the, the each of these here is a field that i'm going to send into my uh, back to data studio so i have this one called timestamp uh, that's the name of it that I'm going to refer to in this app script file. Then the second, the label is, you know, what, how the, the user would see it, um, what it looks like to them. There's a little description and then some information about what the data type is and some semantics there that Data Studio uses to make sure it passes that data correctly. So, you know, I have a timestamp one, I have a latitude field, I have the longitude field, um, I have this one I'm going to create called position. Um, which is going to combine the latitude and longitude for Data Studio. And then I'm also going to just create a more human readable date there for the for us to be able to use rather than that that timestamp. So that's the um that's the the schema. It's just like I said, the blueprint. Uh, the next thing we need is just to the the get schema in our case again it's just very, very simple, is just to return the schema when this is called. So there's nothing extra. Again, this is just a boilerplate piece of code there that, that we put in for Data Studio. And then the get data is where we start to see some the, the sort of magic happening. So let me just bring this in. 
in terms of the get schema function off the top of your head, are there any examples where you wouldn't just return the schema object or? Um, no, I think the, the um, it, it's always going to return the, the object re representing the schema. Um, yeah. I have seen um, people set up a namespace for the whole, the whole project and then things start to look a little bit different. But um, this is one of the the, re the required functions yeah. for data studio, so it has to kind of be in there. You, you know, you can it might be more complex. You can actually, since we're talking about this, we we've defined a very a fixed schema here, and, yeah. and we've said hey, these are the five fields. These are the only five fields you ever see, and this is what they're going to look like. But you might you can also define um, you can have flexible schemas that are sort of generated on the fly. So if you're not quite the, sure what the data would look like, and that would then look a little bit different, but I have not actually. Yeah. So the request that comes in might specify that you know a different schema or. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it might sort of, uh, yeah, and and depend on the data that you grab from the API yeah. as well. Maybe it could affect it as well. Um, but I've not actually the ones I've built have always had these fixed schemas. Yeah. Um, so so definitely. <laughs> what I'm showing you today is definitely an introduction to, to yeah. data connectors. There's certainly quite a lot to it. Um, um, so, um, but it's, it's interesting. It's good stuff. So let me let me copy in the get data, and we'll just sort of run through that. Um, so I put some loggers in here, so we can when we run the the dashboard, we can come back and look at what the data looks like at each each stage. Uh, hopefully that'll be interesting. So there's the URL we're going to call. Uh, in our case, it's a nice simple one. Um, and then, uh, so the request here is the request that comes from Data Studio, mm -hmm. and that will tell me what fields the user is trying to put into their dashboard. So back to that example when someone was trying to draw a line chart with a, you know, with a time along the x-axis and an amount up the y-axis, those two fields would come back. And all this does essentially is just, um, from the fixed schema is just grab the fields it needs. So rather than sending it every time, rather than sending back the whole fixed schema to Data mm -hmm. Studio, we're just going to send back the two or the three or the four fields that we need for our specific um, request, our specific chart that we're drawing or updating. And that way, obviously, rather than, you know, you're not passing all 200 schema fields back each time. So we just get the schema bit we need. Uh, next, we go and call the API and pass it and, um, throw an error if something doesn't happen. You'll see that there's specific um, to Data Studio is this little DS user, just to make sure that shows up to the Data Studio user. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, again, it's just how you'd call an API in a regular app script project, so nothing, nothing sort of different there. Uh, and, and we'll log the response in a moment to go and see what comes back. These two lines here are just, are just changing that epoch timestamp into something more readable. Um, Apologies if there's a better way to do that, <laughs> but it worked for me. Um, and then finally, this is this is the, the the sort of the data wrangling, and obviously it's very simple in this case. It usually is a, is more complex than this. Um, and and in this specific case, what's happening is that that API is just returning just one little row of data each time, so it makes it very simple to to pass in this case. Normally, you would have you would sort of loop over the response stage as well so that each row gets pushed into these into this values array um, but that'll make more sense i think once i show you some data um, but what we're doing here is just is taking that temporary schema which was the two fields that we selected that for our specific chart right now and then we go and look at our data and we just grab the bits of data we want for this specific request and put that into this values um, array and then we push the values array into this data array. And when I show you the data that's um, returned from sent back to Data Studio, that'll make sense what I'm talking about there. So do the data wrangling. And then this is the this is the last piece of boilerplate code here is that mm -hmm. when we return this to Data Studio, we send the data schema back, which is that temporary schema that we set up with just the two fields that we're interested in and then the data that goes with that. So you send tabular data back and the schema telling Data Studio what that data is, essentially. And then it should be able to go ahead and create your charts. So that's the get data function. And the last little bit we need is, is just the authentication function. And so I can just drop this in. 
And again, it's very simple in this case, we just say type none. Uh, but if we were if we were doing an OAuth one, we would just I think it's I think it's just OAuth like that. And and then we would add in, we'd have to add in some extra functions for the OAuth, like mm -hmm. the callback and, and the that kind of stuff, and add the library in as well, the same way you normally do with a app script file project. Um, so it's probably worth highlighting at this point that there's no issue using uh, third party libraries or advanced services. No. And actually, I don't know if Bruce is with us today, but um, I used his caching cache crusher mm -hmm. in one project to help me manage the data. Um, and we yeah. can talk about caching actually uh, towards the end. Um, just I'll, I'll briefly mention that as well. Uh, so yep, you can use the libraries. Um, so other thing we need to do is the, is the uh, manifest file. So we come up to view and, and show manifest file. And at the moment, it's just the standard one. And what we'll do is we'll just add in the the data studio little data studio piece we need so again we'll just put it at the end here and that's the bit of code i've added in there so it's just data studio and then dropping in the the metadata there that goes with data studio so a name for this thing we're building a logo um, who the company is the company url so i mean in this case it's all just um just me but you know um, yeah. you put in your you probably have a support, a dedicated support add-on, and that kind of things. If it's yeah. uh, if something you're going to publish, uh, we'll save that, <laughs> and now we'll try and see if it actually see it, see if it runs for us. We'll see if, see what happens if we can get a little chart in Data Studio. So, um, so as you can see, even even this very basic one, you know, it's 150 lines of code. It's, mm. it's it, and a lot of the length of the project comes just with these schemas. Sometimes, you know, if you have 50 or 100 um, fields, it gets pretty long. So we come up to publish now. We, we deploy from manifest. That's how we do it with these data studio connectors. And it brings up the deployment pop up. Mm -hmm. And um, this is where you can also you can create um, testing and production versions so that you can you can sort of have proper version control and make sure that your users are always on a stable one before you, before you roll out new changes. And again, we can talk about that a little bit later. So uh, so this little button here is the data studio logo. We click that. Gives me the deep link straight to the connector, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll give it a go. Uh, so it pops up this, which is looking promising. It's telling there's that metadata that was from my manifest file. Yeah. Um, we're going to authorize it first because it's the first time we're using this one. Um, so we'll just run through this. It's pretty familiar. We'll allow. And that if there was an OAuth component to this, there would be a few more steps right. in that authorization. Um, Okay, so I think we're ready. So we've got this connect button up here now, so we'll, we'll click that. Oh. <laughs> okay, let me have a quick look. I tried this yesterday and it worked fine. Let me see if I've. Um, what have I done wrong? Is it quite hard to debug connectors? Um. Yeah, a little, I mean, a little bit. Um, you can use the loggers, obviously, to get your data yeah, and yeah. that kind of stuff. But sometimes these kind of um, okay. You know what? I'm gonna. What I'll do is I'll go to the one that I built mm -hmm. um, because rather than waste any our time, we'll see if this one works. Um, so this is the same, exactly the same one, but it's got some comments in now. Yeah, and we'll we'll try this one. Um, and hopefully this one will work. There we go. Okay, so we, we, we're now at the same step we would have been if that connected yeah, worked in yeah. the previous one. And the first thing you see is then these fields that we defined. So the, these are coming from your schema? Yep. So um, for example, the, the timestamp here, it's a duration in seconds, uh, the yeah. epoch timestamp in seconds. So if I go back quickly to where that was, um, so there's that epoch time in seconds, for example, that's the description I've given it. Yeah. Um, and so you do a quick check there, okay. And if for some reason you you need to make changes, you can change the types and things still here if you want. Mm -hmm. We'll go to create reports. Um, and we the last thing we do is just add this data source to the reports. And now here we are. This is so this is data studio now. And what we'll try and do is drag on the geographic map. And this is where we need the drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see if uh, 
hopefully there we go so that's yeah. now we can get rid of that legend we don't need the legend there but that's the the current position of the international space station as of a few seconds ago um so what we'll do so that's how easy data studio is to use uh, yeah. you know, that's it's, it's real power is just being able to do these sorts of things very very quickly so actually if i go back now to the to the demo what we'll do is we'll just open up our logger and just take a look at what we've got so this is what the data so this is the request that came back from data studio mm -hmm. so we asked for the latitude and the position and then we called the api which was this one so the api sent back yeah this is the format that came back in from the api so you can see that we have to do a little bit of um, a little bit digging in there because the latitude is inside the ISS mm -hmm. position. Yeah. Then we created this va this data here, which is what we sent back to Data Studio. So we had that values mm -hmm. uh, array of the two um, numbers, and and then that was inside an object, which is inside an array. Um, and so if we had more rows of data, and I'll show you an example in a moment, we would have lots of these values. Yeah. Um, objects, and then this is the schema that we sent back with it. So we selected the the latitude one, and we selected the the position one, which was the combination of the latitude and longitude. And then again, actually, there's the I guess I, this is the whole data packet that went back yeah. to the studio yeah. with those rows. Um, so this is obviously very very simple, but this is essentially what's going on mm. with Data Studio. And if we go back now, what we'll do is go and create. We'll add a little table in here with some different things. Um, so let's get rid of the timestamp and, and put the date in there and the say the longitude. So this little table here just gives me the longitude and the latitude at the moment for the connector. And if we go back now to the demo, we should see um, that we have some difference. So the, the request this time had the dates, the latitude and the longitude. We called the API again to get that data, and then these are the values that we returned, and this time it was that date, so 2018, September 21st, and then the latitude and then the longitude. So you know, again, the, the request comes in, and that determines then which, what your schema looks like that you, and what your data looks like that you send back to Data Studio. Uh, OK, so that's, that's that demo, and what I'll do is jump Oh, incredibly straightforward. <laughs> well, well, as you can see, it didn't work the first time. Yeah. I'm not quite sure why. Um, Probably a so missing me, comma somewhere. <laughs> I, I'm sure, exactly. Um, a comma or a, a, it's something like that. Exactly. Um, let me jump back to the slides quickly, and then I'll try and show you one more, mm -hmm. one more demo just before we finish. Um, so just a few, and this is, is not an exhaustive list, but just a few things that I wanted to mention that we didn't really see in that easy demo but uh, the data types can be um, so when you're setting up that schema there's a lot more there's probably another four or five um, uh, piece of information that you can add to each field so whether it's a default field whether it has an aggregation that should be specified um, whether it has a calculation um, default calculation that can be done on, so there's a few other things you can add there that are optional um, we talked about the authentication. We can use the library. Um, I'll show you the configuration in a minute, these parameters, which mm -hmm. is the inputs from the user. That I'll show you an example with that. Um, you can add a template. So when, so if you if you're the connect, if you build the connector and then you go and build a wonderful um, dashboard report, and you want users to be able to just plug in and use that same report, at least as a starting point, then you can add that template into your connector so that when they use the connector, it opens up with that template loaded form as well. So that's pretty nice. Um, we saw a little bit of the error handling, and obviously that's something that needs to be you need to build into your um, into your connectors. Uh, when so when you publish a connector, uh, actually we'll talk about that in the next slide. I've got some of that. Um, it's an app script file, so it's subject to exactly the same quotas as any app script file. So the same that that six minute or now thirty minute limit on your um, calculations and things like that. Uh, and on that note, then. You can you can do things like use caching to improve the performance mm -hmm. because if you've called the API and got you know the big dump of data back and then the user wants to go and just make a change to their charts 
then you really don't want to have to go back and call the API again and get all exactly the same data again, and then um, wrangle through all that data just to send back two different fields. And in so, terms of quotas, is it the user's quota or uh, the whoever's created the connector? Is it their quota? It's whoever created the connector, I believe. OK. Um, so, so the connector would be um, my connector, sort of, and then the user. So you have to enable um, link sharing. We'll talk about this in the next slide about how you share it. Mm -hmm. And then they would effectively just sort of use your file. Um, that's what I believe, anyway. Um, uh, then two other things to think about are often the data that comes back from APIs is quite sort of nested. Yeah. Data and that doesn't really just sort of port across straight away into Data Studio. You need to, Data Studio likes tables that look like Google Sheets tables, which are nice and flat and wide. Yeah. With lots of columns and everything in rows. So you often have to do quite a bit of um, data wrangling there to get it flattened and into the right shape for the API from from the API for Data Studio. And then one other thing that I've come across that's always um, adds an extra little challenge there is often there's pagination in APIs, so you have to just be able to loop through them until you get all the data back that you need and keep track of where you are and that kind of thing. But again, it's not, you just have to sort of work that in. So the way you can build them often is to, um, I, I start often with a Google Sheet and don't worry about the data connector, the data studio section first, build a data, uh, Google Sheet version and get the data coming back from the API into Google Sheets just exactly how I want, and then I can sort of take that piece of code and drop it into that, into a data studio file. Um, that's sort of the workflow I've been doing. And that's, that's a nice nice tip. Workflow. I can see yeah. how a lot of people find that a lot easier to do. Um, just because when you have things like that schema in there and you know that might yeah. be quite long, the files just get quite big quite quickly and that just makes it seem more um, more complicated than it, than it really is at that stage. Um, so just in terms of the sharing quickly, uh, on the right here, we saw we saw the deployment screen, and mm -hmm. we saw that I just used the head version, which is obviously your latest code. But you can have a a production version, which might be one version behind, and then you can have a testing version. So you can you can make sure that the users are always on a stable version before you go ahead and um, update them to the to the to the most current version. And the other thing you need to do, if which I didn't do in my example because it was just me using it, but mm -hmm. if anyone else is going to use your connector, you need to make sure that you enable that link sharing. Right. Mm -hmm. so that anyone can use it. Um, so that's how we share them. Um, and a few best practices then just, just to um, to share here. So make sure you do the link sharing. Use the caching that we talked about briefly. Yeah. Don't put any secrets or API keys directly in the script. <laughs> um, and you can use the property service if it's your own. Or in the example I'll show you in a minute, you can actually just ask the user to input theirs at the connector level. Mm -hmm. um, the manifest file is that metadata that's effectively public. So, um, but it, you know that's just like your name, your company name, and stuff. So, but yeah. again, it's going to be available to people. And then keep those separate yeah. deployments of your connector to make sure you can keep the version, manage the versions properly. Um, and then, last thing, let me just see if we can, if I got time, Martin, just for five more minutes to show you this this last one. Yeah. OK, great. Um, so what I'll do. Um, so this is, can you see that now? It's called Copy of Page Modified. Yep. So this is a connector I built earlier this year um, that's now in the, in the, on the Google's gallery. And it's a bit like when you, when you um, submit an add-on. So Steve obviously knows all about this, that Google will then go through that approval process Mm -hmm. and probably ask you to change a few things. And then eventually, yeah. hopefully, they'll say, OK, we'll put it into the gallery now or, or in the add-on add store. So it's the same, they have the same process now for the for these connectors. And so for Page Modified, we built this one. And the reason I want to show you this particular one is because if you look at my get configuration file now, you can see I have some configuration parameters. Yeah. So um, the info is just uh, a, a parameter that just just a piece of text to let the user know some, some information. Uh, then I have some inputs, two input boxes, which is asking for some pieces of information that the user can then input um, to then go and uh, use this connector. 
So in this example, it's a, the connector. I want to see my data from my page modified accounts. So that's why I'm going to enter my API key so that it will then pull back my only my data and you know not anybody else's data at all. That kind of thing. So let's give this one a try and we'll see if we see if this one can work for us. So we'll go deploy from manifest. Um, and this is a copy of it, obviously, so not don't need to worry about there. So this is what this one looks like. And here's the um, this is what this configuration boxes now look like that we didn't have before. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so you can, um, you know, there's quite a bit you can do here. Actually, you can, I think, you can have like drop-down menus and stuff like that as well mm -hmm. if you want. Um, and so let me, what I'll do is I'll put my key in here, and I'll reset this after this. Um, oops, I'll reset after this show as well. So, like that. we'll connect. So we put those pieces of user information in, and we'll connect. And now this, so you can see there's quite a few more fields in this one. So this schema is a lot bigger. We'll go and create a report. Same, exactly the same workflow though. Um, we'll add to the reports, and then we will. Let's this time. Let's just draw a very simple bar chart. There we go. And so what this one is doing is it just it's crawling my website and telling me what the responses are for my website. Mm -hmm. So I had um, you know, 1,100 endpoints that came up with 200, a few with 301s, and maybe one, a few with 404s. So it's for it's for marketers to sort of monitor websites. Anyway, so we'll go back to what I want to show you, though, is let's go back and look at the, the data now on this side of things. So it's a little bit more, you can see there's a lot more to it now. Uh, but again, we have the request from Day Studio comes in, and this time it, it has these configuration parameters as well as those fields. Mm -hmm. so that's the user configuration parameters, which I now have available to me in, in my get data function to to use to go and call the API with the right API key and things like that. And then these are the fields then that I need. Um, you know, the response code and the name is the two things I've asked for. And then this is what I send back to Data Studio. And each of these values uh, array is a row of data effectively. So this time I have a lot more rows of data than I did in my previous example. Mm. And so all of these 200s uh, are getting grouped into that chart and just counted. That's what that's what it's doing in this example. So Data Studio is doing all the aggregation. Yeah. 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 Um, and you can, you know, when you're in actually in Data Studio, so you see this little, this is where my counts of the page URLs is, and I can click that, and maybe I can change it if it was, I think count is the only one that mm -hmm. makes sense here because it's... yeah. Rings, but you might be able to change the sum on average or things like that. And you can you can change all of your dimensions and metrics here in Data Studio as well. So um, yeah, and so this is one actually that I used some of the, some other libraries here to help me, or some other um, pieces of code as well to help me with the performance side of things. Because sometimes you know when the data comes back and it's really mm -hmm. big, you need to you need to cache it like I talked about. So, um, okay. The, so that was what I had for you on the on the demo there. Um, let me stop sharing the screen and just come back. There we go. So, looks well. I've got some questions. Okay, yeah, <laughs> no, well, I'm happy to try that. So I'll do my best. I, well, I think it was brilliant. It's um, I, I've been aware of the studio and connectors for a long time, but I've. Other than a very cursory glance, I've not really delved in, but um, it's really eye-opening in terms of what you can do, um, and you know it, it seems very logical and straightforward to me. But Steve, did did you have any questions before I, I jumped in? Yeah, I have about thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll take it in turns then. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but <laughs> Ben, you did mention uh, about uh, approval from Google. Yeah. So if you make it publicly available, they have to go through the review process again, right? Yep. Okay. And then I think you also mentioned, I've seen on the gallery, there are some paid ones. Yes. Um, that was going to be my question as well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I took yours. Uh, but what's the difference of writing one that's paid and not? not paid? Well, so I have not written one that's paid, and I've never written a paid add-on, actually. So that's not something I would have 
um, be able to sort of speak about. But certainly the 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 one that I showed you there at the end, what the client did was they wanted to add that functionality to their service so they can take that deep link and just put it on their page and you can just link straight to it. Um, and the paid ones, I mean, I'm sure it, I'm, I'm guessing it's very similar to the way you would do it with your, with your add-ons that you would, you would have to add in a, the payment component also using Stripe or, or PayPal or something. And, okay. Um, but that's not something I'm, um, maybe something for a future episode actually one day. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So, uh, just so people know there there's no, um, so you can go to data studio and you can see listed community connectors, but a bit like add ons, there isn't no official kind of monetization marketplace. Everyone's got to kind of bake their own. Yep. Yep. At this stage and yeah. data studio is totally free. Building a connectors are free. Um, because that's script, so you know you can definitely play around and build your own versions of things if you want. If there's a paid one that exists, you can still go ahead and build your own um, if you want. Uh, have you looked at any of the models that people are using for monetization? In term, I guess they're using the input fields that you just talked about, just to. Yeah, I don't. I don't know actually. I haven't looked into the to paid ones. I think it's like. Like a bit like the add-on market, and a bit like you said, Martin. There's mm -hmm. not really a, a um, sort of formal way of doing it. It's a bit of a bake your own. Um, I don't think the some of, some of the big companies that have been around building add-ons for a long time. Like one example would be, say, Supermetrics have added in mm -hmm. connectors for their for their paid clients. Uh, I think it's still pretty hard to for you as an individual to just go ahead and build a connector, make it paid, and suddenly start. Yeah. You know, making making significant income from that. Um, I think it's, that's quite hard to do. You need volume, obviously, to do that. Um, yeah. Um, the, the other question I was going to ask was, um, when within the community connector, is it possible? So, one of the the services in um, AppScript is the the session, so you can get the you know the effective. Um, user uh, get their email address is do you know if that's possible in community connectors to know who is making a request um, uh, for the data good question I don't know the answer to actually um, I, I mean you'll they are, as, uh, yeah you'll have to try it out and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're standalone app script files so you can you can yeah. do pretty much everything kind of the, the regular app script files you know that you would normally do so um, but uh, yeah, I don't like to <laughs> my neck out on that one. Up, no. um, the other thing I'll mention is that Google have a a lot of examples, probably maybe ten or fifteen, maybe twenty even now of um, open source connectors that people have built. Mm -hmm. So one for GitHub, one for Stack Overflow, and so you know that's where I learned a lot by just going and looking at how they've done connectors in there. And I know I gave you those five building blocks, and it was very simple that first yeah. example, but if you go and look at the the ones on GitHub, they look all you know they'll all look a little bit different. But if you kind of dig in a little bit, you do find those those same building blocks. Um, but that so the the open source ones are good to learn from as well. Mm, that's another good tip. So we'll try and um, we'll try and I think uh, I'm inclined to try and pull all your good tips together and <laughs> share that as far as the yeah, show. Yeah, for sure. Goes. I've got um, all of these links actually bookmarked from. Um, you know, just from using them, so I can yeah. send you those as well. For you to add. Are are there? Oh, well, Steve. Before I keep <laughs> jumping in, then you got anything else, Steve? You want to ask? Yeah, Ben. When I think about dashboards and generally, um, we can create very cosmetic ones. Yep. Sometimes it's good to have a dashboard to say, "Oh, this one's a anomaly. Maybe it's an error type of thing. It's in red." My question is, is it possible to click on that to drill down to another dashboard that unpacks the summary into the detail? So you can't just click on something and it pops open a new chart the way. So you can do that with pivot tables now in Google Sheets. They've just introduced that functionality. And I think that's what you're sort of getting at. But you can, um, you have tool tips in Data Studio. So it gives you the information of what that particular one is, um, you know, the, the data behind it. And 
you know, you, you can set up as many, you can have multiple pages in your dashboards if you want to have different levels of granularity or detail. Uh, so that there's a lot of, there's a lot you can do and they're adding new features all the time. They're listening to users and adding new features. So, um, you know, if, if something gets upvoted enough, then it'll be added in. Uh, I think one of the things they're working on is like an auto refresh so that you can kind of have them in real time. And um, you know, there's various other ones actually that are coming along. So is it difficult to embed these into websites? No, it's it's really easy actually. So you can share, it's like a Google Sheet. You can share the, you can share it directly if you want with someone, or you can get the embed code and drop it into a website. Um, uh, so, so they're very easy to use, very easy to share, very easy, easy to control whether someone has view access or editing access and that kind of stuff. Yeah, great um, thing. Yeah, so. And they're they're free and you know a lot of fun just to <laughs> play around with it. Even even if you don't, even if you're not the least bit interested in the app script connector stuff, it's still a good tool because it connect connects to um, you know connects to Google Sheets. So if you have a table of data in Google Sheets and you want to do something a bit more fancy than just the charts in Google Sheets, you can create a dashboard and you know you can connect it to your AdWords account, your Google Analytics account, your BigQuery account, or any of these connector ones. So there's actually a really nice talk uh, um, Cloud Next uh, in San Francisco. I think I know which one you can mention. Alicia, um, he, he did natural language processing, so she. Yep connected um that, that was less of a data studio connector but just kind of a very nice example of what you could do with data studio um she had some data and sheets and she kind of wrangled additional data from apis and yeah. put, put together a very nice dashboard um allowing you to kind of uh, get a, 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 you know deep insight into, yeah, into yeah. the data yeah, there were some really nice talks actually. Um, a few, quite a few ones actually at that Google Next. Mm. There was one that um, uh, Minaz Karzai and Philippe Hoffer, I think it was, who did one about BigQuery and Data Studio. Yeah, it was that was. It's now on YouTube as well as the one from Alicia that was really good as well. I really like um, the where you mentioned um, that you can do templates as well. I think yep. that's it. So I I'd imagine you just create. Um, your your example in Data Studio, and then just link. Yep. Um, um, so let me. Yeah, I didn't have that one right to hand, but you you create your template, and then effectively just take a least piece of that URL there, and dump that into your manifest file. Mm -hmm. And then what that does is at that configuration setting, there's a little checkbox that the user can say, "I want to use a template," or "I don't want to use a template." Right. Yeah. And then when it pops open, then all your data is populated into whatever template is that's showing. Um, yeah, so that's that's a really nice feature, actually. And, and that allows people who don't want to build a dashboard, which is not the easiest thing in the world, when you're staring yeah. at a blank white screen to suddenly say, yeah. I've got to get insights from this blank white screen. Um, you know, that's still quite a tricky thing to do, even if the UX of the tool is very, very easy. Mm. Um, so it's, it's a really nice way for you to just get users up and running immediately. So they can just click through, as you saw, the, the, the workflow or, or the authentication flow for the connector is pretty straightforward. Mm. You just kind of go through the clicks, and then if it just pops up a report, then that's nice, a nice thing to see. Something Steve covered in add-ons a while ago was um, um, notifying users of of new versions and yep. you know, hi highlighting what's new in, in versions. Um, when you push a new version of a Data Studio connector. Is there anything the user sees, or do they just um, no, if, kind of? They might just see additional. Uh, yeah, they would just schema. see uh, any additional functionality, maybe that you've put in, um, but they wouldn't necessarily. It would just be seamless. So yeah. that if they popped open that same report they were working on yesterday, it should just, you know, keep working the same way, and maybe they'd have an extra field or something if they. Yeah. If they well, needed. how about the config parameter? Uh, wasn't there an info? Uh, type where you could put in something. Yep, you could. You could definitely um, put in in that info if you wanted. You could certainly put in some some more information there about something if there was something new. Um, I mean, for some people, they might just do that configuration step once to connect, mm -hmm. and then for other people, maybe if you're if you're depending on how the connect is set up, you might want to keep going back and back to that configuration place to, to put in a different um, parameters. And actually, what you can do now, what they've done is 
those parameter boxes, they, they allow you now to, to do that input at the Data Studio reports window. So rather than having to go back to that configuration page, because that's um, you know a little bit wonky if you're not if you're having to keep doing it or you're not particularly technical. Um, so you can now put input those parameters at the Data Studio UX level, and they still get sent back with the request the same way they would from the configuration side. So so that's something they introduced actually pretty recently, um, well maybe six months ago. Um, that that makes it a bit more convenient. It seems cleaner. Uh, another question before we end. Um, in the blog post, it mentioned something I haven't looked into. I guess it was cloud data prep. Yep. Uh, it reminds me of the phrase garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're, I think it was suggesting they're using machine learning where possible. Do you have any uh, experience or thoughts on that? Yeah, so I, uh, I was at the, the Google Next conference this year, and I went to one of the sessions, like a hands-on code lab type session about the BigQuery and data prep and data studio. A really interesting session actually and and data prep is it's almost a bit like using bigquery like big 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 data in a spreadsheet type environment where you can you know it's all kind of in columns and you can say i need to split this column into two or i need to um, chop off the left five characters of this column or I, I need to find duplicates and remove them so the typical data cleaning type stuff you do that in a spreadsheet but applied to much bigger data scenario and then what you do is you save all of those steps as little like macros essentially so that next time you run your data through this it just can clean it all for you and they use the machine learning to uh try and guess all of the types of cleaning you might want to do basically based on your data i think so and it's pretty good you know it suggests things and you're like oh yeah I'll do instead of having to work this out i can just do a one click and it magically cleans my data but it's like everything like you say steve garbage in garbage out so you have to be you bet um, an eye on everything and um, understand why, um, you know, make sure your data is complete and clean and all that, and no duplicates and all that kind of stuff before you just rely on these charts mm -hmm. that you're then sending back to users, um, because otherwise you'll, you'll, yeah, you'll be in trouble later further down the line. <laughs> yeah, because it's always nice to have nice looking visual data, but can I trust it? So that helps through. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, again, that's kind of always on you though to make sure that you. You, you do the due diligence with your data yeah. sets um, because yeah it's the data studio is the fun uh you know sexy part of the analysis bit that you want to spend the time on creating something that looks pretty <laughs> and you sort of neglect all of those data munging data wrangling formulas at the, the front end then you can live in trouble okay, thank you yeah good question well, I'm I'm raring. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go off and make stuff. <laughs> oh, I look forward to um to your uh, some blog posts from you, Martin, and your take. <laughs> well, yeah, one of my interests is in um, uh, data from Twitter. So, oh yeah, I've, yeah. I've been playing around with that for a long time. So, yeah. and one of the kind of struggles I have is you know present you know presenting it, yeah, presenting it, and so. The, the idea of being able to create templates for people then to build on uh, <coughs> really really appeals to me um so uh that that's probably changed some of my <laughs> future plans about some of the stuff i want to be doing well yeah definitely set aside an afternoon and see if you can yeah yeah see what you can put together well ben that has been a fantastic introduction um to data studio uh, and data studio connectors um, so we'll put together as much as we can in terms of links and bits and pieces yep. um, to help people out. Um, uh, it's nice as well to, to see, you know, the, a number of, you know, the, the app script uh, features that people will be familiar with are there. Yep. Um, yep. Which kind of ties in to our next show because um, as part of that, you mentioned um, production and development and um, that kind of life cycle. So um, our next show is actually on the 5th of October and we've got Grant Timmerman from Google who will be talking about CLASP uh, and TypeScript and how you can do kind of local development. So uh, again, you could this could all be integrated into, you know, how you develop and deploy your, your data studio connectors. So um, hopefully, uh, Ben, You'll, you'll, I think, are you a 
clasp user as well or it's you... it's on my list of things to just get set yeah. up um because i i've um just developed on my own effectively yeah to, uh, i've i kind of get you know i haven't been proactive probably about setting up a the most efficient um sort of uh dev environment because i haven't really had to in some ways but i you know, I, I put myself on save stuff on GitHub and use yeah. that kind of stuff, um, Git control, version control and things. But um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to using Clasp actually. To it's a bit wonky the way I do it. <laughs> so, so I will try and I'm going to try and get it set up actually before that webinar. But that'll be a good, <laughs> yeah, a good reminder if I don't. If I'm, yeah. So uh, Ben, you're you're a consultant and a trainer. So if people are interested in um, learning more about um, what you do, um, we'll include your website um, so people can do that. And so hopefully some more people come your way uh, Thanks. Um, yep. asking um, questions that interest you. In yep. the... But um, again, thanks very much, Ben. Uh, yeah, well, thanks we'll... very much for, for um, you know, letting me talk and having me as a guest. It's, it's a lot of fun. Thank you. And. Um, and thank you as well, Steve, for uh, your contributions as well today. Hopefully, we got through most of your questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> if not, I'm sure you'll be in touch with Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free, yeah, do. No, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks.